Is it deplorable? Mm. Is it irredeemable? Is it Nazi? Is it fascist? Or is it garbage? Can we pick one? Because this matters. Hello from New York City in a country on a knife edge. I'm Harry Cole, and this is a very special US election. Never mind the ballots. We're almost there. The polls couldn't be tighter, and now we're just awaiting all the shouting. And boy, is there going to be some shouting, starting right here. In association with our friends from Betfair, we have everything you possibly need as America finally goes to the polls. Joining me straight up is a titan of political journalism, <laughs> a, a man kind enough once to give a young reporter a big break. Oh, Andrew Neal, commentator. A, a judgment vindicated. In the, well, your, your words, not mine. <laughs> you now interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Neal, you're an expert on these things. You've seen a few elections in yeah. your time. Who's going to win? No idea. <laughs> Fantastic. That's all we've got time for. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> see you of. next year. Are we about to see so the, look, the greatest comeback since Lazarus? A friend of mine said this election started as a dead heat yep. and it's got even closer. Wow. Since then. Yeah. And I've never seen, I've covered every presidential election since uh, Ford v. Carter in 1976. Wow. Just after dinosaurs stopped ruling the <laughs> earth. And I've never seen an election which the national polls are even Stevens, mm -hmm. the swing state polls are even Stevens, and they haven't moved for the past three or four weeks. That's where they're at. Nothing much has changed in the campaign, which makes it very hard to call. You're talking about a couple of thousand votes in each swing state mm. could make the difference. That's how close it is. Uh, when are you expecting to see a result? Could we see this is going to be a 20, uh, sort of 2000, 2000 situation where it drags on for, for took weeks Took 36 and days yeah. in 2000, took four days uh, in uh, 2020. Yeah. Uh, I. Look, there's one. The polls could be wrong. Yeah, and they've one, been wrong before. They've one, one of them might have won by a fair amount. Mm. It's within the margin of error. If that's true, we'll know it in the early hours of the morning, not long after midnight. But if it's close, it could go on for a long while. I think one of the key states to look out for is Georgia, yep. one of the swing states. It counts quite early. And it was 11,000 votes in it and last, 11, last time And 11,000 last time, yeah. as Mr. Trump said to the... Uh, <laughs> so famously Republican. said on the phone, yeah, find me 11,000 votes. Yeah. Can you not just well, do a fellow a favour? Yeah. Finally, there must be 11,000 somewhere. <laughs> Down the back of the sofa, uh, yeah. Exactly. So that'll be one to look for. The, the A number of states close at 7 o'clock East Coast yep. time, midnight UK time. None of them is that important, but yep. it'll be an indication of, is the Democrat vote holding up? compared to Biden 2020, is Trump doing better than he did 2020? That won't tell you the result, but it may give you a sense of the, the, the trend momentum. of direction for the evening. Let's have, a look at, let's have a look at the Trump campaign, talk about that momentum. How's it been? It's been a, a rock and roll few months. Let's have a look at it. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. We're going to be appealing this scam the judge was a tyrant. And they keep saying, he's a threat to democracy, and I took a bullet for democracy. I am running, and we're going to win. I'm not going to change that. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. Low IQ, she's a low IQ individual. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. We got a war going on and she's out partying. Does she drink? Is she on drugs? It is clear he has become increasingly unhinged. We will leave the world in space and reach Mars before the end of my term. We're gonna reach. I said to Elon, is that doable? Absolutely, he loves rockets. I'm going to get you some french fries. Look, we put on your resume. I worked at McDonald's. Good evening, New York City. I'm dog gothic MAGA. I don't see no stinking Nazis in here. You said a lot of wild <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andrew, it's not exactly Lincoln v. Douglas. It, it, it's it? not. <laughs> but he was slightly all over the place. Obviously, look, we can probably all agree that if he was still running against Joe Biden, he would He'd be, walk it. He'd it win. Exactly. He'd but win. It, the, the changing of the candidate uh, back in August, it did slightly unsettle him. But it does feel just in the last few days, well, the last few weeks, really, he's starting to fire. The campaign is firing on all cylinders. Oh, it, the, the photo ops are you know, pretty on point. The garbage truck McDonald's. He's staying vaguely on message. Like, 
is he is he is he peaking at the right time or is well it... the latest su suggests uh, in some of the papers on Sunday morning mm. that it's beginning to lean a little bit Harris's mm. way again and you know we've got to be very careful it's all spin yeah spin coming from both camps uh, I would say when you look at some of the things that have been said in normal times Trump should be easily beatable and of course Harris is putting up a stronger uh, campaign than Biden yeah, we're totally. agreed I mean, yeah. that if it was Biden Trump would be winning not by a landslide but by a lot yeah he'd have pick up states like well, we New saw, we, saw Virginia. What the, we saw what the, the Biden right. campaign would have looked like the other day with his but with she, his garbage gaff didn't he? her weakness I mean with Trump you know what you get yeah and for a lot of people it's not what I want <laughs> yeah. for others I rather like it you know yeah. you make up your mind they've made up their mind for her, she, she was somewhat sprung on the American people. Mm. And despite the length of the campaign, they still don't really know her. Yeah. If you look at all the polling, it's all saying, yeah, but what does she really stand for? She flip-flops a lot. What's she really like? Yeah. And because she's had quite a hermetically sealed campaign, it's been highly it's a bit very, <laughs> very polite way of putting it. She's yeah. had no cut through. She hasn't gelled with the American people in the way that a, a, a more honest, a more... Uh, clear-cut candidate would have done I think that's her disadvantage yeah with Trump you can like it or loathe it but it is what it is with her what is it is she the San Francisco liberal mm. who was way to the left of the party uh, who was against fracking wanted to defund the police yeah all the rest of it or is she back now as a more centrist Democrat uh, of the kind of a Bill Clinton sort we don't or know she's trying to be all things to all the people, American yeah. people don't know either and I think that's what if this is still a contest because of that yeah. she has not cut through by enough to guarantee her victory let's have a little look at the Harris campaign and uh, the last few weeks it's been a bit of a whirlwind history is in your hands proudly announce I am now officially the Democratic nominee <laughs> She's the one that scares me. You just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. I'm a dude and I'm for Harris. Can I see Gen Z? Let's win this. We will, sis. Okay. <laughs> Come on. I didn't know you had swag. We are not going back. I call him Agent Orange. I'm here as a mother. A mother who cares. Because we love our country. Andrew, we've got Taylor Swift, we've got Beyonce, we've got Samuel L. Jackson, we've got every celebrity you can possibly Doesn't think of, matter. except Elon Musk. Does it make Doesn't a blindest make any difference bit of difference? At all. The American people know that these celebrities, they, <laughs> they live like medieval princes. They're surrounded by entourages, they fly in private jets, they, they are worth billions, they're billion. I mean, the fact, in some ways, the Democratic Party is now the party of the billionaires. Mm. It's more billionaires supporting it than the Republicans, and that used to be the country club uh, party. I think the the problem there for uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris. Look, it, the safe voters for her, mm. because if she is the next president, probably not too much. The, the, how left wing she is is probably being overdone. Yeah, uh, she will have competent people around her. Basically, people who the people that are running the country Mr. now, Obama, yeah. Mr. Biden, and so on. Uh, he's much uh, of a much bigger risk. But I think the American people still come back to the point I may still see her as a risk because they don't quite know what she really stands for. They don't quite know what they're getting. She hasn't cut through. And I think that's a, a lot of the time is because she's not authentic enough. Yeah. I mean, Trump is authentic, could be authentic in a bad way, but he is authentic. She's not. How much of the incumbency factor is going to play? Because very, obviously she's, she's sort of the ball and chain to her is essentially well, Biden. She, and she hasn't really been able to have come up with a credible answer on how to distance herself from him, given she's exactly. been in, in the White House for One years. of her problems has been to be the candidate of change, but also she's the candidate of continuity. She's been in the White House. Sometimes she talks as if she hasn't been in power at all yeah. for the past four years. And people just don't see that as credible? And or? They just don't see that as credible at all. And this is a bad time for incumbents around the democratic yeah, well, world. Yeah. The British Conservatives, they got thumped. Yeah. Uh, Mr Macron in France, his party got thumped. 
when he called elections. The, the German Social Democrats who run Germany are a basket case yeah. at the moment. This is Apart not a from, good time. Look at Mr. Trudeau yeah, in he's Canada. He's no, one, no one, no COVID era leader is, is really, you can think is of still in well. place in a functioning democracy. And that is why, of course, she's trying to be the candidate of change. Turn the page. Do people believe it, but, though. Can you turn the page? what page is she turning on? Because yeah. it's her page. That's the problem. And hanging over it all. And I think in some ways an even bigger issue than the economy. Though interesting, although this is a, is a really strong economy by mm. European standards. But people are aren't feeling it yet. People don't feel it. They yeah. don't get the Democrats are not getting the credit for it. I think immigration haunts her like no other issue. And that's why the Sunbelt states are looking, uh, and looking Sunbelt pretty states Trumpy are right looking now. bad. And why even you know, sending the illegal migrants, I think we've now got to call them undocumented uh, migrants is the official phrase, <laughs> sending them to cities like New York and D.C. Mm. Uh, and uh, Chicago has, has nationalized the issue. Yep. It's no longer just a border state issue. She was put in charge of that by Mr. Biden. A bit of a hospital pass, that one, isn't it? It was a bit of a hospital <laughs> pass. We're not quite sure who Mr. Biden wants to win, by the way. <laughs> well, he doesn't seem to be being particularly helpful, does he? And, and, and although, as the election loomed, by executive order, a number of tougher things were done mm. on immigration, uh, it only raises the question, yeah, well, why didn't you do that right away? Exactly. You know, over 10 million people have come into this country illegally in the past four years. Yeah. Ten million. That's the population of Sweden. That's on the ballot. That's it's on the ballot. That's on the, that's on and, the agenda, yeah. And that's only the ones we know. Yeah. These are the ones that the border force has, have quote, caught, encountered, yeah. caught, held on to, maybe tried to send back in a few cases. We don't know how many have come in undetected. And this is a nation of immigrants. It's a nation of immigrants, of immigrants who, who came in the right way. Legally. Yeah. Came in legally are doing their best to get on and do not want their minimum wage, which a lot of them are on, to be yeah. undercut by illegals. It sounds a lot like the issues we're discussing back in London exactly. and across Britain. Yeah. And it's why the black and the Hispanic vote, particularly among men, is going better for Trump that it has for Republicans yep. in most recent elections. Andrew, you're going to stay with us. You're going to come back and see us in a minute. We're going to talk to some pollsters. We're going to talk to some bookies. We're going to talk to some experts. More experts. Other experts. Other experts. <laughs> <laughs> Other experts are available. Andrew, see you in a minute. OK, thank you. Let's look at some data. Joining me now, Sam Rosbottom, Betfair spokesman, and James Johnson, pollster and founder of JL Partners. Let's do the punters first. Sam, tell us about the markets. Well, Donald Trump has been the favourite for the past month. Yep. The firm favourite, what we're noticing now is there is a little bit of a drift on him. There's a little uh, bit a of bit a of slide. correction there, is it? Or? No, well, look, this, this market has been absolutely unprecedented. We've, uh, you know, since August, the market has flipped eight times. Wow. Who's going to be favourite? Well, we, we've talked about this before. We, we have spoken about it yeah, on previous, previous episodes. Obviously, when we, when we did the uh, debate live, we saw the odds move in real time. Mm. Uh, we're going to see plenty more of that on Tuesday night when those those key states come in for either candidate, the odds are going to move. But as things stand, it is Donald Trump who still remains the favourite, but his odds have drifted. And I'm going to say this, his odds have drifted significantly. I think when we look back to previous elections, we have never seen a drift like this at this stage in the election campaign. So what you're saying is you don't know what's going to happen? <laughs> Well, Trump's the favourite. Trump's still the favourite. Let's have a look at the... Uh, let's. Let's, have a look, let's have a look at the... Bit. There let's. it is. So, But it's edging there back into too close to call. It, it is. And, and Which is basically is, where everyone seems so to be. So I'll put it into context for you. On our wonderful uh, temperature gauge, Donald Trump was as high as 65%. And that's sort of down, that's down sort of this level and on that's, likely, yeah. Absolutely. He was likely to win. He was 65%. He was as short as 4 to 6, 4 to 7 uh, now his odds have drifted. He's around five to six. Uh, looking at the the uh, percentage chance, he was around 65 percent. Now has dropped to under 60 percent. So this is a significant move, but he is still the favourite. Let's have a look at how the race. Do. You said it's changed eight times. Yeah. This is as tight as it's been for 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 a while. But it's. I mean, he's still. You know, 56, 44. You take that. You take that as a win, right? Absolutely. Look, tr like I said, Trump is the favourite. We've seen this market be unprecedented. Um, in terms of how much it's changed, we've had 150 million pounds uh, staked on this market so far. It's pretty significant uh, amount of cash, right? Absolutely, we're expecting plenty more as well. The past few days have just been absolutely. Uh, and most of that money in the last few days is where is it going? Is it going on onto Trump, or is it? So the the majority of the money is 
on Donald Trump. Like, the punters are heavily backing him. They're also heavily laying him as well. Mm. So, uh, it's it's one of those. It's, it's, it's the favourite at the minute, but a lot still to come. James Johnson, what do these punters know that you don't? Why, why are the pollsters all... They're all herding now, aren't they? They're basically saying we don't know. Well, so our model, very similar to Sam's, has gone from 68% chance of a Trump win last week, now yep. right down to that 60% mark. Very similar, to getting into that too close to call territory. The reason, one of the big reasons why, mm. was that a poll came out uh, in Iowa. Yes. Um, by Ann Seltzer. Talk us about that. She's a very respected pollster. Most pollsters, including myself, would not want to sort of, you know, go up against her in a polling battle. She's been very accurate. She showed how three points ahead in Iowa. Now, for listen, Iowa's proper Republican country. Listen, like, you know, that I, would be a, she'd be on course for a landslide uh, if she was Absolutely, and Iowa was a solid Trump state in 2016 and 2020. Now, if that poll is right, then it, what it's done is it's created a, a concern amongst, amongst pollsters and, 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 pundit, and, and punters of is there a hidden Harris voter out there? Mm. Is there this sort of suburban white woman concerned about abortion who is not showing up in the other polls yeah. but is going to come out for Harris? We we still think this is a, a lean Trump race. Yeah. And we still think Trump is the, is the favourite. And that's partly because he's got real advantage in rural areas amongst white men. And really, this is what this race is now. It's a battle between who can get the voters out, white rural men, versus white suburban women. We've seen the pollsters consistently underplay Donald Trump's vote. Uh, is there a chance that they may have overcorrected this time and actually making the race look closer than it is because they're paranoid that their, their pollsters are getting wrong? As a pollster, how are you taking into account the you know, the 2016, the 2020, in fact, even in 2020 when Trump won, it was still it was still closer than the pollsters were saying it was going to be. What what corrections have there been in the last four years? I know you you guys sort of secretly meet up and sort of self-flagellate <laughs> and say, oh, what have we done? We got it yeah. wrong. What have we done? Is there a is there a sort of movement to to sort of tweak the models. You, look, I think so. What we have done at Jail Partners is we've done a more we've done a more mixed mode approach. So what that means is that rather than just contacting people online, we contact mm. them by phone, we contact them by text, we contact them by if they're playing a game on their phone, they get notifications. Listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Or indeed watching Never Mind the Ballots. Yeah, well, of course. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, that, that picks up voters who we think are less likely to answer polls generally. Yeah. But overall, I have to say, you know, looking at the rest of the market. A lot of US pollsters haven't changed much since 2020. It's not like the UK market after the 2015 election, where all the UK pollsters got a massive mix, miss. There was a big polling inquiry in Parliament, they yeah. all changed their method. That hasn't happened here. So if the polls are wrong, I think it's not because of mistakes made before or mistakes made uh, in correcting those mistakes. I think it's a new problem, and it will be basically who actually ends up turning out in this election. That's the hardest thing for yeah. pollsters to account for. Who actually goes and casts a vote? If they're going to be wrong, I think it will be because of that. Sam, you've been out and about. You've been to, you've been everywhere. Tell us, I you've, have, been to the, yeah. you've been to the, you've been on a swing state tour. Well, it's been. A, it's, what are you What are you hearing? These are the, it, these are the bet fair odds for the for the swing state. Looking look, pretty Trumpy, except uh, for I Michigan, mean, right? I mean, look, and Wisconsin. We we know that this election is likely to come down to these absolutely key battlegrounds, these seven swing states, yeah. which historically have been incredibly tight. And I think when we look back to 2016, what Donald Trump did was winning these key areas. Like, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, in the in the likes of Michigan, in Wisconsin, mm. not, not almost 30 years a Republican had not won those states, but Donald Trump did it in 2016. I think that's why this is just incredibly tight. And I think when we look at the swing state markets, so these mm. uh, are based on the where the betting is going, these are the swing state markets that we have. The, the blue wall, we've got uh, Wisconsin, which was in favour of Donald Trump, yep. is now heavily favouring Kamala Harris. Michigan was in favour of Donald Trump, now heavily favouring Kamala Harris. And this Kamala is re recent movement, or is it? Recent, in the past 72 hours. Uh, when we look at the Keystone State, which a lot of people are saying, and I, yeah. I'm one of those, that uh, Pennsylvania... Heat. It's going to come down to Pennsylvania. 19 electoral votes. It's going to be a long week if, that, if it's going to be a long week if that's the yeah. if that's the reality. But it has been a pleasure to to go uh, across yeah. the state, let's, speaking to key people. Let's have a little bit. I think you've been you've been in Detroit. Let's have a look at that. We feel like a change is upon us. We are excited. We are pumped. We are ready to say welcome, Madam President. That we want taxes cut for us, and we want the one percent to pay their fair share. Right. We want to be able to say no more price gouging, and we feel like Kamala Harris is doing just that. There's a certain agenda being pushed on people that they don't like, you know. Uh, so hopefully, you know, God willing, Trump changes all that if he wins. We're in wars that we don't need to be in, you know. Um, Democrat Party used to be the peace-loving party. 
You know, they'd be the ones, you know, let's bring our troops home, all that stuff. And now they're warmongers. I think I see positives in both. Um, ultimately, I would say probably Donald, but um, I, I'm good with either one. And whatever, like I said, whatever happens, we'll support them and uh, like, try and get this thing heading in the right direction. Kamala Harris, of course. I mean, it's like embarrassing to talk to you from another country that we're even standing here doing this, like, that we're, we're actually on the brink of something so horrific. Whether I'm Democrat or Republican, it doesn't really matter. What I say is that the last four years have not been good, okay? So if it was good and a Democrat was in office, I'd vote for a Democrat, but it hasn't been good. So I'm gonna be voting for Trump. So I wanna start with this. My father is an immigrant from Italy. And it is very important to us that Trump becomes the president because there is so many people that are coming into our country not the right way. And it's unfortunate. So the vibe, let me tell you this, the people that I hang around with want Trump. Well, I look at the track record. I look at it as there is a person that was in power before and he um, did a great job. So I now look at the person that's in power and could be doing something good and she hasn't. You have fun, it looks like you're having fun. Nice a, to get out and see some people out of the office finally. What a great place Detroit is. <laughs> the people are absolutely lovely. We were uh, very, very uh, welcomed, a warm welcome and, and very hospitable it's people a there. Bag but, there right? um, really interesting to, to get amongst it and to speak to people there. You know, uh, one thing that, uh, that we certainly found was there was a, a broad range of, of people that were, you know, in favour of Trump, in favour of Harris. And again, it just sort of comes down to, we, we talk about these swing states, and I think that just sums up, like, you know, how much of a toss-up this really is. Yeah, where else, where else did you go? So uh, we were also in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, and also the Keystone State, Pennsylvania, where everyone's saying it's going to come down to Pennsylvania. So speaking to people in Pittsburgh, the Iron City was very interesting. I was meant to introduce this bit. Here he is in Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> I think that she's going to win. <laughs> Carmella got this. I have her pin on right now, so yeah. And we're working on this campaign until until Monday night. I think overall right now, I think Donald Trump is a slight favorite, but I still think it's about a 50-50 coin toss. I mean, just because of my most important issue, I would like to see Harris win but I can understand uh, both sides. I would love for Kamala to pull through, and you know, I'm from the Midwest, so Tim Walls, I think, is a great representative of what um, my Midwest values are. You know, I, I'll be casting proudly for uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, um, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it flipped to Trump in Pennsylvania either. Pittsburgh, JJ, I mean, this is almost an impossible task for you, right? You're having sleepless nights. Are you, uh, you, have, you, have you staked your reputation on, on getting this right? Look, the pollsters are sort of slightly <laughs> protected by the fact that it the is... The politicians a, aren't, sir. No, well, it's, I, a I close want it's a close race, right? Like, you know, yeah. it really could go either way. And pollsters telling you that someone's going to win for sure, they're lying to you. Yeah. Um, it's quite funny. I think we must have been crisscrossing because I've been in Pittsburgh and Detroit as well over the last, last week. And I think the thing that's... The dynamic that I think is not being spoken about in this race is mm. what non white voters do. Yeah. So I did a focus group. You know, Democrats traditionally very, well, very heavily Democrat. But um, Trump's eaten into that. He has. And I did a focus group in Detroit, uh, Macon County. It's in the northern suburbs of Detroit on Wednesday night. And it was fascinating because the people who are pro-Harris in, in the room were all white women. Wow. And the people who are pro-Trump in the room were all black or Asian Americans. And uh, the, the final moment the of that focus group. Of what you'd, how you'd think this race was going to get. Now that is not going to be replicated in the numbers. Yeah. But even Trump eating into a bit of that is really going to matter. It was the last question I've asked of a voter in this campaign over months and months yep. with a short distraction for the UK election with yes. you of course Harry Briefly. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but the last question I asked of a voter was at the end of that focus group uh, a black 31 year old woman um, she voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 didn't vote in 2020 and she was umming and ahhing throughout the focus group she wouldn't come down on a decision I said where are you leaning and she said Donald Trump and I said why and she said the economy and that, yeah. I think, tells a bit of a story about this election. A lot of these undecideds may come down. It may just be as simple as inflation and the economy. Inflation and the economy, the border, immigration, all those top issues. Trump, even if you ignore the, sort of the, the trends of the polls, uh, Trump is ahead on, yeah. the, on the top four issues. Abortion comes in at about number five, I think, if you look at it. Obviously, Harris but, is ahead but on that. But very important for white suburban women. Yeah. And that's the big thing now. Will, will that they be enough find, to save her? Will they find these women voters to turn out and beat the, beat the white turnout in the it, rural counties? I think Donald Trump should be winning this election, like, right? The being ahead on yeah. all those key issues and the incumbency factor and the you know geriatric Joe in the White House causing absolute yeah. merry hell, he should be walking this. He should, and I'd be interested to see whether you've seen the same sound. But when you do the interviews and the focus groups, 
there is still a lot of dislike for Donald Trump's character out there. There is still a lot of people saying he's rude, he's aggressive, yeah, he's divisive. The, 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 the biggest thing from speaking to voters in the blue wall states mm. that we've visited, it, the economy. People have the said the stupid. past Dumb. four years yeah. have been Which awful. is unfair, because the American economy, I mean, you know, Rachel Reeves would kill for these gross figures, right? It, it feels unfair. Uh, look, it, it really matters to people, and, and it's, it's very interesting that, you know, we, we have spoken to people that are for Harris and are for Trump, but ultimately they have all agreed on one thing, and it is the economy. Yeah. The past yeah. four well, years have I, not been great. I, That's what people are, were yeah. telling us. And remember the personal lens on this. You know, yeah. if you, uh, there's a Hispanic man I was talking to in Arizona. Um, he uh, feels like you know prices have gone up for him over the last four years. Okay, they might not be growing as fast now, but they, compared to four years ago, it's gone up. He was telling me that he goes to the grocery store. He's having to pick out everything really carefully, yeah. thinking about the price. And he sees what he thinks are illegal immigrants with food vouchers going and shuffing everything into well, the this is, Which is the Trump closing message is, you know, trying to merge the immigration and the economy issue and into, that's about into one fairness. if he gets that right. And that's a really yeah. powerful message for voters. JJ, we're going to yeah, we're gonna see you, I think, on election night. Where are you going to be? Uh, I'm actually going to be in DC, but, right. uh, but travelling around between before then. Powers of technology, I, think, I suspect we'll have oh, yes. a word. Sam, I've got one more question for you while you're here, and it's a self-interested question. What's your nap? What's your bet? What's your, what, where's the, where's the well, value in the market? <laughs> where, where can never mind the balance viewers make so, a quick buck? I have been looking at the markets, I've been diving deep into this, and I think given how everyone's saying that this is too too close to call, uh, and when we look at Trump still heavily favourite to win, right? Yeah. Look, there has been a slide on him, but, but he is still, still the favourite. Yeah. Can he win all of these swing states? All seven I don't of them. I don't think he's gonna win all of them. If he does if he fails to win in one of them, he isn't gonna get three hundred electoral college votes. Yep. You can back him at 11 to 4 to win between so 200 and yeah, almost 3 to 1 you can back him at 11 to 4 to win between 270 and 299 electoral college votes if he is going to win it's going to be tight right yeah and you're probably better off at 11 to 4 rather than the 1.85 he is right now there you have it sam rosbosom's nap jj sam thank you very much see you very soon don't say i never give you anything there's your free bet now let's chew that over with Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, columnist. Well, this poll in Iowa overnight seems to have startled the horses a little bit. The yeah. Beckham markets are wobbling, as we've just seen. Mm -hmm. What's your take on it? I think I used a word with you off camera. <laughs> what was that word? I, I think it was. Use... Right? Uh, yes, yes, it was. As a matter of it's fact, it's all right. We're right. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, cool. good. Uh, look, Donald Trump was beating. Joe Biden in June in the same poll, yep. same Ann Selzer poll, by 18 points. So now we're being led to believe that Kamala Harris, mm. considered the most unpopular vice president of all time, a profoundly horrible <clears throat> candidate, has flipped that 21 points in a matter of a couple of months in Iowa, which has not gone to a Democrat, I think since, I don't know, 1970. <laughs> Six or something. <laughs> we'll check it. Don't it's, worry. It's yeah. crazy. I would love to come back here on Wednesday morning, yeah. if you don't mind. Of course. Just so I can dunk on this poll. Because Iowa will be called the minute after that poll closes. It's definitive. We're all concentrating on that when we should be concentrating on other polls that have come out today, including from NBC News, mm. that shows Donald Trump leading the popular vote nationally. That's a poll that had Biden up 10. If Donald Trump is leading in any polls nationally or tied or even down one, it's an electoral do you, landslide. Do you think mm. the polls are consistently, as they have done before, still under? Trump. Absolutely. Because he brings out voters that they can't get to. They haven't voted before. They're called non-propensity voters. They missed by seven points under Biden. They missed by six points under Clinton. What's going to lead me to believe that they've suddenly all changed in the proper direction, which is accurate? I don't buy it. You're, 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 you're the most bullish guest we've had, we've had so far on the show today yeah. about Trump. You know, the way you're saying, the chance he could win the popular vote, you think he could do it? I mean, it doesn't matter, right? He has to win the electoral. Yeah. <clears throat> could he could he eke that out? Sure. If he won the popular vote, that would be good for the country because then that argument against, well, the people wanted hit yeah. Kamala Harris, but Donald Trump was elected. Here's the bottom line. Nothing has changed since Joe Biden dropped out in terms of prices still being too high for people. Yeah. They don't like that. They don't like the fact that crime in their neighborhoods continues to go up where people are moving out of places like New York, San Francisco, Chicago for places like Tennessee, Texas, and places like North Carolina or South Carolina, for example. Uh, they don't like what's going on at the border one bit. Yeah. And the world is patently more chaotic under Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, in terms of Gaza, in terms of Israel, in terms of Ukraine, in terms of the world in general, was much safer think, and much calmer. Is the world's under ready Donald for Trump. a Trump comeback then? Uh, look, Donald Trump's personality turns people off to mm. a certain extent. Some people, anyway. But all 
many families out there, dads like me know, that my grocery prices were a lot lower under Donald Trump. I felt safer in my community under Donald Trump. And I liked the fact that the border was secure under Donald Trump and there were no foreign wars yeah. going on. Those things have not changed. And that's why I think Donald Trump wins this. He wins a question. Do you think a better candidate could have beaten Donald Trump? Though? Let's look at that. I mean, Harris, she came into this, you know, brat summer and screaming about yeah. joy. And now she's calling everyone a Nazi. So, like, you know, what's... what? Because well, Donald Trump is an infinitely beatable candidate, yeah. right? What's 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 she got wrong? I wish they'd settle on a word to describe Trump supporters. Is it deplorable? Mm. Is it irredeemable? Is it Nazi? Is it fascist? Or is it garbage? Can we pick one? Because this matters. Uh, yeah, it, this went from a positive campaign, Kamala Harris, to a profoundly negative one. And the reason why is she can't talk about her ideas to fix the economy, particularly prices of things. She can't talk about the border because obviously she was the border czar. Yeah. So now it's just go negative on Trump. And as Hillary Clinton learned, that ain't good enough. Well, so how do you think the week's going to play out? You know, when are you expecting like, if Trump, Trump wins in a way that you think he might, but yeah. this could be over by breakfast, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Only because the early vote has been overwhelming. So a lot of the vote is already in, in many yeah. states. So you won't have to count too many more on election night, even those states that wait to count mail-in ballots like Pennsylvania until yeah. that night. I think, we're gonna no, be looking at I think we'll know while. very early. Uh, if he wins North Carolina and Georgia, then he only has to win one more state in the in the blue wall. That's it. And he's going to win North Carolina and Georgia. What happens if Trump doesn't doesn't win? I mean, yeah. Tinderbox has been has been a, a sort of word I've heard a lot in the, sure. the last few days out here. Do you think you know, we don't expect him to go gracefully, do we? Uh, no, there'll, there'll be uh, obviously uh, lawsuits and recounts and all that stuff, and he has a right to that. But in the end, the Senate will go to the GOP, and they just have mm. to win Montana and West Virginia, not very hard. Uh, so even if Kamala Harris wins, I guess the solace for Trump supporters or Republicans is the fact that she's not going to be able to get a lot done if she doesn't have a majority in the Senate. So you think he's going to do it? Joe Concha, thank you very much. Come back and see us again if uh, on, on, and talk about that Idaho poll. Save, yeah. save, <laughs> save the tape, yes. I will be back here. Michael Jordan slam dunk. <laughs> you heard it here first. Believe me. Right, don't go away. We'll have more fireworks shortly. Now joining me, someone I think is going to disagree with Joe, Francesca Florentini, host of the Bituation podcast. Yes, Bituation Room. The Bituation Room, tell me about it. Like the Situation Room, but angrier. Yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, and run by a woman. Uh, yeah, no, we have just comedians and activists and lefties and big old Bernie bros on my show. It's Fantastic. fun. And you are calling this election for Harris, or are you, still, are you worried it's too close to call? Oh, I've heard... <laughs> I've heard that noise Ugh. so many times in the last two days. I've heard the term nauseously optimistic. Nauseously optimistic, I and like that. And that's truly how I feel, and I am nauseously optimistic that, yes, Harris is going to pull this through, obviously after a couple of insurrection attempts <laughs> um, and a lot of, like, you know, conspiracy theories and the ghost of Mao Zedong rose from the dead and flipped votes for <laughs> Trump. Um, so after all of that, yes, after I do all think the shouting. Harris will be the victor. Do you think she's run the right campaign, though? She started out with this, this sort of this joy. You know, they got it to Biden. You know, we can all, we can all see right. why. And then there was this sort of some of this couple of weeks of, like, joy and optimism and it was a brat summer and she was cool. And now she's just playing the old hits, calling everyone Nazis. Like, is that... Is she what? playing this right? Playing the old hits, calling everyone. <laughs> I didn't realize that was an old hit, you know? Well, it didn't work for Hillary, did it? Hillary didn't call people Nazis. She's called them deplorables, though. She did. Not the same thing, though, I think, if you look at the No, but basically saying up. Donald Trump's a fascist didn't work in 2016. Why is it going to work now? I mean, what's crazy is that I actually think he's become a little fascist. Really? I think he's mellowing, after, mellowing in his old age. After getting a taste of it uh, in the White House, and then, of course, sicking a mob on the Capitol when he didn't win the election. Yeah, he's gotten a little bit fashier. There were some extrajudicial killings happening in the summer of 2020 um, during the Black Lives Matter protests that were uh, obviously National Guard were called as well. Uh, cops were sicked on peaceful demonstrators. But let's be real. This is the closing days before mm. a national election for president. And you have a convicted criminal, convicted sexual abuser, who we are now debating in the final days, did he or did he not have a Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden? Was it a Nazi have, rally have for Bill Clinton when he was there? Have a best friend relationship with convicted sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, who maybe had photos of Donald Trump with underage women. But, Were they I BFFs? Mean, just, I mean, that is an allegation. And does he want to actually put a hit out on his political enemies like he just said the other day with Liz Cheney? But she, this but is an amazing problem, way to it, end. This is an amazing way to end a presidential isn't the, campaign. Isn't the problem, though? Real strong what is, ending. What is wrong with America and what is wrong with this campaign, though, that you can say all this 
stuff, allegations and, uh, you know, and spin on, you know, what he said or didn't say about Liz Cheney's, you know, being a war hawk, which I seem to remember Democrats making that point a few years ago. But why isn't it working? Why is it still so tight? If, this, if he's the monster that you, 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 you make out he is. I'm not saying he's why, a monster. Why you, is, you can judge for yourself whether but, cozying but, up to but Jeffrey why Epstein is, it, is why a monstrous is it, thing to why do. Why is it still a dead heat? Why is it still, I, I think that's a really good question. And I think in part it's from a lot of the, um, the fear mongering that happens from right wing news outlets. <laughs> oh, here we go. I thought you might try Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Not the bitch you're right now, is it? <laughs> no. And it actually does impact a lot of people who oh, are mainlining the kind Trump of hatred. Up, Donald Trump is up against Harry, every let me tell single you something. network. Let me tell you something. There was a, there was a, a man outside of Chicago who, mm. after he was, after listening to a bunch of right wing media telling him that Palestinians are the enemy, he went out and he stabbed his neighbor who you used to call him that used to, to call him uncle. I'm just telling you, things are polarized in this country Absolutely. for a reason. Because we mainline But that's not necessarily Donald Trump's that fault, is it? Us against one but, you know, another. You know, both of these campaigns, I'm pointing at I'm them, just now, telling you, why negative. is there a thirst for blood? It's because the mainstream a lot of mainstream news well, outlets yeah, but and right wing news outlets you've got a candidate going have been around whipping comparing, up people yeah, into a frenzy whipping because up people their in neighbors are their enemies okay. and they're are terrorists, so I'm going to hey, 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 murder hey, a six-year-old hey, boy. Hear me out. How are, you, how are you accusing anyone of whipping up in a frenzy when you've got ABC News playing out footage of Nazis walking through you know, New York and saying just because the same venue was used a hundred, you know, almost a century later, it's suddenly a Nazi rally? Was it a Nazi rally when the DNC were there? In the same building? They weren't saying America for Americans, echoing the exact same lines of the Bundes party. Oh, come on. You, you, even you, I think you, it was, a, I think it was a beautiful you know, history you lesson. You know this is, a, this is a step two. You know this is just, you know, just rhetoric. I don't know. Your smiling though doesn't I make it smile. any less. I smile. You're smiling. Same. I smile too because it's so she's wild laughing. to me. She's laughing is, while she says this it. This is close. Here's what I will say. I, I have a lot of critiques for Kamala Harris's mm. campaign. Um, I think that it could have done a better job of celebrating the good things of the Biden administration. Which we, we, just for speaking our viewers on, at home. Speaking on labor rights, right? Standing yep. up for unions, making sure that everyone had the right to organize, passing uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, and getting us on a path to green en energy that comes with stable union jobs. One of the most important pieces of climate legislation we've ever mm. passed, but as we are facing it. a sixth extinction, right, extinction right now. So she should have done that and i do think she should have personally distanced herself from Thank some you. of the warmongering policy specifically propping up israel um, to continue to commit war crimes against the people of Gaza. But you know that it's a contentious issue. Really, you, know, you know that there is a lot of support for Israel in the United States. It is States. a contentious issue to see whether we should, you know, uh, bomb the oxygen let's, facilities let, of let's hospitals. Both, let's both agree and not, kill not to have that babies. argument. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. We don't have to. A different, a different but I but I'm telling you my real critiques of her, and I do yeah. think actually she may lose the Muslim American vote in places like Michigan because of her support. Jill Stein surging in, in, in Jill Michigan. Jill Stein yeah. is surging over, and I don't, I don't support Jill Stein. I don't think she has a pathway to victory. Yeah. I do think this is a vote against Donald Trump by and large, but I think Kamala Harris has left a lot of room for Donald Trump to say, hey, Muslim Americans, I'm your best friend, yeah. even though I, 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 wanted, I ba tried to ban you from this country. I increased drone strikes by 400% in the Middle East. I, could, I allowed Saudi Arabia to continue bombing mm. the hell out of the country of Yemen, uh, uh, plunging that country into starvation. So, but like, yeah, Teflon Don seems to be able to, you know, pull that. that Teflon sort of, Don, pull that Harry, off. needs this. He needs this more than you need it, I need it, any American person needs it. He needs it because he obviously wants to overturn the, no. the lawfare convictions against him, right? 100%. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we're, agreeing. Win, we're agreeing, we're agreeing. He, oh, need, he needs to win the presidency <laughs> to stay out of jail. I mean, is this not the greatest what? democracy on earth? One last question before we, right? before we go. What, what Englanders? <laughs> British, we're British. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you Englanders. No, right? <laughs> but like, isn't it amazing that we say we have the greatest democracy on earth? Here's a man, it's a let me, let me tell you something, Harry. In Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro also similarly issued a bunch of like fake, um, did a bunch of fake news and ginning up of violence mm. surrounding his election, which he did not win, right? Yep. He said it was fake and a bunch of people stormed the Brazilian capital. Guess what? He was barred from running for president for eight years because Look, you, they actually have whether consequences it has a, it when to you...
issue a hit out these on your been, own Congress these, these attempts, These attempts to, to get rid of, of Trump through lawfare, through impeachment, whatever, have, haven't worked. But let, let me, whatever one, one lawfare. Question, one question. One question we believe in law and order, what whatever happens, lawfare. What happens, what happens when Trump wins? What does the Habituation Room podcast do? What does the left of America do? We they're never going to accept, they're never gonna accept him. <laughs> I hope you don't. Don't we do that. We drink cyanide don't do on that. air and just podcast into don't, the night. Don't do that. No, don't um, do that, because you won't be able to come on Never Mind the Ballots again. But no, what no, happens? No. You know, I think we keep fighting, right? So you're never going to accept him as a legitimate president, even if he w walks it? Well, I, I did not say that. We keep fighting. What are you fighting? We can't what, fight the result. What am I fighting? Oh, just just relax, woman. <laughs> just calm down. Let a, let a big, strong man who wants to take uh, away all of your bodily autonomy rights, mm. any right to an abortion. Women are dying right now from preventable infections no. related to miscarriages mothers two women we know this week died in texas because they had were suffering miscarriages they had an infection and they needed treatment immediately they were turned away from mm. emergency rooms in texas because there was a fetal heartbeat and so no doctor could attend to them until there was no more fetal heartbeat those women lost their life one of them was already a mom that's what we're voting for in this election. We're voting for our human rights because women all around this country, their lives are in peril. And I think most people, including in the UK, you guys really need to understand just how second-class citizen mm. women in America have been have been thrust and ready, into and they're ready to since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And in part, that was done because the justice system, right? Yeah. In this country, it works in multiple different levels. Well, in Texas, the Biden administration has tried to say, look, you have to attend to women in the ER, no matter what. It's a federal yeah. law. But because of... Trump appointed justices in multiple federal Between, courts, yeah. they, over, they basically... It, yeah allowed the Texas law to stand, meaning condemning these women to die. What I'm telling you is we cannot afford to have more Trump-appointed justices because they are condemning people to die in this country. Stakes could not be higher, Francesca. Thank you. Come again. Don't commit mass suicide on the Pituation Room podcast. Please don't do it. Come again and see us soon. Yes, Stakes couldn't so be higher. higher. Thank yes. you for coming. Cheers. Right, well, the stakes couldn't be higher. Don't go anywhere. We'll have someone who's a little bit more pro-Trump next, I think. Right, let's see the other side of the coin. Raheem Kassam, editor of the National Pulse, a Trump world insider. I think you're called Trump's pal. Trump in the pal, pal you said, Are yes. you a Trump pal? I'll take it. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. How is the old boy? Doing very well, all things considered. Win? Having just been shot at and, you know, multiple times. Is he going to win? I say yes. I'll say yes just about. I think there is enough out there at the moment uh, in terms of concern over the economy, in terms of concern over the border, um, and frankly, that, that Kamala Harris really hasn't managed to, to fully make her case. Like... I understand the arguments about abortion. I understand the arguments about, you know, the, 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 the pro-democracy angle of it. But that one in particular, they've lent on very heavily. Mm. And it actually turns out to be one of uh, voters' least concerns when you, uh, when you go through the data. Look, we saw with Francesca, this is a country extremely divided. Um, mm. You know, nothing, that's not going to change, I don't think, regardless of the outcome of this result. When are you expecting a result? Do you think it's going to be one of these messy, long, long, long weeks? It's already messy. Um, if you look at some of the polling stations in, in like Bucks County in Pennsylvania, if you look at Fulton County, look at Maricopa County, there are all sorts of issues going on at the moment. Um, the polling stations are not staffed well enough. Uh, people are standing in lines four hours just, long. Are you just laying the narrative here for another steal? You can go there and see it for yourselves. I mean, the uh, I don't know. I don't know that there is going to be a narrative of a steal, by the way, even if he loses. Mm. Uh, but certainly, I think Americans are starting to learn that there that there is something broken in how they actually get to cast their votes. You shouldn't have to line up for four hours outside a polling station to cast your vote. You shouldn't be told, like, you have to come back tomorrow, we're closing the polls early because there's too many people in line. Mm. Those things are not uh, something that Americans had 10, 15 years ago, and now they're finding this out. And it's not everywhere, but it's in those tight little marginal um, communities that you see this taking place. And so, yeah, people have the right to question, like, why is this happening? You're plugged into Trump world. You know, you know you've know, you interviewed him multiple times. You're, you you talk to people. You've been quite critical of his campaign mm. uh, so far. What's, I mean, it feels to me like he's started, like he's actually the last week or so has started to fire properly on all cylinders. Um, but you've been writing this morning that you disagree with that. Yeah, look, uh, I, back in May, I started to get a lot of insider Trump world information about how much money was being spent, television ad buys, uh, that sort of thing. And a lot of that money, people make me don't realize outside of America, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. get siphoned off to outside groups, private companies, all of this, and then Pulses it disappears, and, right? Uh, Nobody can track where it goes from there. And, yeah. 
So the complaint was that people inside the campaign, particularly one individual, Chris Lasavita, who's the uh, campaign co campaign manager, manager, co -campaign manager yeah. um, has been in personally enriching himself on the back of these well, kind oh, of deals. Quite, yeah, you know, serious allegations. That's yeah. the allegation, right? And it's been written about, the Daily Beast yeah. had a thing, and the Guardian had a thing, and it's been written about. Um, I, I've had inside people confirm that to me personally, saying that this is what he's doing. Anyway, look, the, the, since May, they had a big problem, that the focus was not on getting him out there, the focus was not on, uh, on, on winning Trump the election, but the focus was on you know, making themselves look good. They did a huge uh, puff piece in the Atlantic but magazine about themselves. The bookie's favourite, the pollsters sure. haven't heard. Sure. Uh, you should know, be, should be you've got totemic moments like the McDonald's stunt used to the right. garbage truck. Right. And so what so, so, but, yeah, so what has changed? So they're what changed they're, they're firing on all cylinders now. In September, they brought back Corey Lewandowski, you know, mm -hmm. fabulously controversial. 2016 figure, figure for, for, for the less, for less, less focused viewer. But and yeah. I had said over the summer, you absolutely need somebody like Corey. He's more aggressive. He understands Trump better, and he's going to do those things. The McDonald's thing, the garbage truck, you know, those big retail politics moments that only somebody like Corey Lewandowski gets. So that's where you're seeing the change in the campaign now and the change in the campaign's focus. I worry that it was a little too little too late, um, but I think we just managed to see um, the, the, the impetus swing to Trump in the last couple of weeks. This poll in Iowa yesterday I don't think is a serious one. I think that's going to you know, disappear in the next 12 yeah, hours with, yeah, from with, conversations. There's more coming out. The NBC poll's huge. Um, and and there's, just, there's still a lot of cricket to play. Well, 20, 20, two days to go. Yeah, it's I mean, a lot. What, 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 you know, what is your, what's your hunch? How is it going to play out? Is it, you know, we've seen Trump basically manage to stay on message relatively for Trump yep. in the last few years. Harris is obviously increasing the sort of negative campaigns along the joy. The joy is gone. How do you see the sort of eve of the eve of either polls sort of sweep through Pennsylvania and Michigan go. Yeah, so this sort of brings me back to the summer as well. They shouldn't have done the early debate with Biden, right? I think that was well, a strategic error. Well, they got rid of Biden, error. yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, think, that... I think you wanted to run against Biden. Yeah. And I think Kamala raised more money. They're dumping money all around at the moment, spending so much up on television. And that's a hard thing to combat because that's a turnout mechanism, right? And actually, the Trump ground game is quite thin. They've outsourced a lot to Elon Musk. They've outsourced a lot to Charlie yeah. Kirk and Turning Point. They don't have a central turnout operation. The Kamala campaign does. In the last 24 hours, that is a huge deal. Can yeah. you get your people to the polls? I think, look, I'm an optimist on, on the right. I think he just about nicks it, but it should never have been this close. You think he should, he should you know, so that the campaign is to blame for that? She's a terrible candidate. She's been terrible out there. The more the public has seen her, the less but, they like but her. The pollsters are saying he's a drag on the ticket, and you know the incumbent, he's the incumbency factor should mean that the Republicans walk this. He's dragging uh, Congress and Senate campaigns over the line. If Carrie Lake wins in Arizona, it's because of the Trump factor. He's not a is drag. Is she going to win in Arizona? I, look, look, everyone will tell you no, so I'm going to tell you yes. <laughs> That's why you're here. Excellent. You've, you've, you've got the methods of the madness. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, Richard, you're a Brit. Like, you're, mm. a Brit. you're an Englishman in New York today. Um, you know, is the world ready for, for another Donald Trump presidency? I think more ready than they think they are. I think a second Donald Trump presidency isn't going to look all that dissimilar to his first. And so what does that mean? It means less war. It means uh, more... Uh, At what cost, though? You know, are the Ukrainians ready well, for the Well, we've had Trump this versus... conversation before. <laughs> I think they are ready, by the way. I think they know what their worst-case scenario is. Look, we'll save that about their worst-case scenario. Look, in NATO, he's going to force NATO to pay more. All of this stuff is going to come back around. And by the way, the people that they're talking about putting in positions like Treasury Secretary and, and Secretary of State and all of these things are actually people that abroad, they'll get along with just fine. We'll see. We shall see. Coming in, I think Hopefully. you're joining us on election night, I hear. But oh, yeah. uh, Raheem Kassam, editor of nationalpost.com. That's the one. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, let's hear what Andrew thinks of all that. Right, Andrew Neil is back with me. What did you make of all that? That was a, a nation divided, right? Well, it is a nation divided. It's more divided than ever. When Normally, I mean, I covered a lot of presidential elections, and, and in big elections, sometimes 20, 25 states change hands. Yeah. You know, they don't anymore. It's down yeah. to seven. I mean, you might as well actually abandon the election. I'm old enough to remember when Florida made a swing state. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> it it, it uh, quickly went purple, then red. Mm. Uh, there are so few states. It's concentrated in seven now. In California, you might as well not bother with the presidential yeah. election. New York State, you might as well not bother either. Alabama, why bother? It's all down to the seven, and I think that shows how divided it is. A couple of interesting things that struck me... Um, I think we saw on your show today that the left in America 
has been discombobulated by Donald Trump. Yeah, they can't. They don't know how to handle him. They take him too seriously. Yeah. He, even he, his supporters certainly don't take What's him seriously. What's the famous, there's a famous turn of phrase, isn't it? That, that, that his supporters take what he says very seriously, but not literally. Yeah. And the media and the left take what he says literally, they, but not, not very seriously. seriously. Yeah. And, and that's, think, uh, they still yeah. have, in, in nine years, he's been you know, doing this. And I think the pro Democrat uh, uh, woman you had on, it kind of shows Francesca, that. Yeah. What's the. What's the positive message to come out of this? Because it can't be abortion uh, alone. That's a very important issue uh, for a lot of women, and it could help swing the election uh, Kamala Harris's way. But if she wins, there's not much she can do about it. Yeah. Because she can change the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court. Yeah. and she w won't have a majority in the Senate or the House to get a, a, a federal law passed to restore Roe v. Wade. So it's not an issue in which whoever's in the White House can do much about. I think if I was um, a Democrat today, I would be worried that the, Dem the Democrats running for Senate, and they've got over mm. five seats they've got to hold, are actually doing better than Kamala Harris. So she's the drag she's on the She's a drag team. on the ticket. Yeah. That's the problem. Do, do you think America is ready for a female president? I mean, we've been here before with Hillary. She obviously didn't win. And a black female president. Do you think? Do you think there's any factor in in, in that in I don't coming myself. through? Because she I hasn't really, really she hasn't and, made and an issue of it really. To her credit, way. yes. I mean, this is a country obsessed, awashed in identity politics. Yeah. But to her credit, she's not made an issue of that. Yeah. She's running on on the quality of her character, <laughs> as Martin Luther King would say, yeah. rather than the colour of her skin, which is right. You know, we both come from a country now where it's not unusual to have a woman prime minister. Well, the Tory party have just uh, elected a, a black female woman to be their leader. With, 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 Nigerian, with Nigerian heritage yeah. and so on. I don't think that it's holding back. And indeed, one of the reasons why it's not is very interesting that uh, she's doing worse among black and Hispanic voters yeah. than Mr. Biden did in 2020. And he that's did a real issue for rather them. That's well. a real, that's a real issue for them on that. I think in the end, the disparity thing about all this, and it tends to happen in presidential elections, particularly American, is that it, it, it all comes down to the race. Yeah. And it all comes down, and I don't mean by race, colour, no, no, I mean the, to the context. Getting your, getting your voters to... And, and it yeah. all comes down to the personality of the candidates. Whereas, you know, we live in a very dangerous world at the moment. Uh, events. It is not going well for Ukraine at all no. at the moment. It's on the defensive. The Chinese, uh, the sound of war drums well, can be heard can around imagine, Taiwan. Can you imagine? You know, you seen, we were watching a movie when you, I read. I wrote an intro the other day with North Korean <laughs> troops, North Korean troops. Are 150 miles from the from the port from, yeah. Ukraine. I suspect half of them will defect. Oh, it's <laughs> it's astonishing. Like, like, can you imagine that 10 years ago uh, writing that, that no, being no, a, a story? No, and yet foreign affairs in this most important and powerful mm. countries in the world has played almost no role in it at all. You know, Donald Trump's all over the place as usual. We have no well, that's idea. That's the question I was going to ask you is, is, is the world ready for Trump 2.0? Well, and, you know, I think in Europe it's very worrying. Yeah. You know, at a time when Europe's on the defensive, and we know Europe should be paying more for its defence too, but even if it does, it cannot uh, work without the United States. Yeah. It is still the essential power here. And, you, and yet you have a country which is now got, I think, the national debt here is $36 trillion. <laughs> it's you like, lose focus after it's one like trillion, a, a don't wash. you? Yeah. It, 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 it makes Italy look rather frugal <laughs> in the way they spend <laughs> money here on debt. And what are, what are the candidates saying? You hardly ever hear this talk. Heard yeah. uh, she's saying she'll add $3.5 trillion, and Mr Trump is saying, I'll add $7 trillion. I mean, it's the politics of la-la land. And I do sometimes, it frustrates me at times that that we concentrate on is she up, she down, yeah. is she better, is and he the worse. Big issues are Whereas just... these huge issues which will affect us all remain in this election largely undebated. But they'll what hit you, whoever's in the White House, whoever's in that mm. Oval Office, come the inauguration on January the 20th. Astonishing. Andrew. Fascinating to pick your brains. Thank you for your Never Mind the Ballots debut live from La La Land. I've uh, it. And here we are. We'll hopefully, we'll talk to you on election night if we, if we can. Grab us out. But thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. We'll be back overnight, through the night, through the week. When we will get a result, we do not know. But we will be here on Never Mind the Ballots. Lots more guests coming up. Thank you to everyone that joined us today here in La La Land, as Andrew so delicately put it there. <laughs> That's all we've got time for. It's going to be a hell of a week.